And this thyme is light, fragrant, and it's just a really nice herb. I don't care. I don't care how this thyme tastes. You don't do that. I like blanching them in the water, taking them out, and then frying them. You need to go to jail, Gordon. What are you talking about? What are you frying then? Put it on gnocchi for? Fresh garden peas. Oh my god, it did! It did put the peas! It did! This video has been brought to you by Squarespace. Use the Vincenzo's Plate code to get 10% off on your first website. Hi and welcome to Vincenzo's Plate, the place where you get to learn how to cook Italian food in your own kitchen. Today we are reacting to Gordon Ramsay gnocchi. Why? Why Gordon? Why do you wake up in the morning and decide to do this? You were not born to cook Italian food. So let's see what he did. You can make gnocchi just with flour and eggs. However, the potato gives it a nice, light, sort of creamy, fluffy texture. Just cut them in half, take your spoon and scoop the inside of those potatoes. So that you know, guys, when you make gnocchi, you do need to boil your gnocchi. Actually, I've got two gnocchi recipes on my YouTube channel. Calabrese version and my non Abruzzo version and you will see how to make gnocchi. The most important part of the gnocchi are the potatoes. It's everything, right? You need to boil the potatoes to the type of consistency, you know, that you need to fill with the fork. And then you need to make the gnocchi with that. You can use leftover baked potatoes. They are not even warm. They are cold. He's already making me upset, guys. He's already making me upset. Let's watch more and I will explain more of what he's doing wrong. I'm using leftover baked potatoes, but this really works as well with leftover boiled potatoes. Two choices, you can get a fork. Did you see how hard it was to scoop? It was so hard, the potato. Potato should be nice and moist. Should be able to just break it easily. And sort of mash the potato and get it nice and light and fluffy. Or this little gadget, it's called a ricer. I suppose it's a posh word for a potato masher. Just squeeze. That utensil is what you need for gnocchi. It's amazing. Nonna, I use a bigger ones. It's like huge. But this one here, it's what you need. And I believe everyone should have this riser in your own kitchen. It's a must. You must make gnocchi at least once in your life. Just get one, guys, okay? Just get one, please. Gently. You can see how nice and light it is. Almost like fluffy little strands of potato. You can do this when potatoes are hot. It'll go through the rice so much quicker. Just slice that off there. Now, a nice spoon of a cotter in. A little touch of salt and pepper. Three. Oh, okay, so he's doing a different type of uh, gnocchi. He's putting a touch of ricotta. Are you doing ricotta gnocchi or are you doing potato gnocchi, Gordon? You don't do two together. I know there are no rules, so you can always do it, but what do you put ricotta in potato gnocchi? Potato gnocchi are wonderful, just with potatoes. You don't do that. It's really important to season the mixture as we go along, otherwise the gnocchi becomes really bland. Flour. Not true. Not true. You don't have to put salt if you don't want to put salt. You put the salt in your sauce and when you cook it. Not true. You don't have to put the salt if you don't want to. Over the ricotta. Sift so there's no lumps. One. That's a good thing. Yeah, you want to sift your flour so there's no lumps. But how much flour are you using? you got two potatoes. How much flour I want to know? If you don't tell me, how do I make it? It's so important to know how much flour you have with your gnocchi. The consistency needs to be perfect. The ingredients are so important. One delicious egg. Give that a little whisk. One delicious egg. Give it a whisk. That's correct. make a little well in the center. You want a nice soft pieball ball of dough. Give that a really good mix. Get some thyme flowers in there. Thyme? Is he putting thyme in the potato gnocchi with the ricotta? What the hell are you doing, Gordon? And this thyme is light, fragrant, and it's just a really nice herb. I don't care. I don't care how this thyme tastes. You don't do that. First, you don't use a spoon to make the gnocchi because look how small it is. Such a small batch, you can do it for one person. Use your bloody hands. Use your hands, Gordon. Second, what 
are you doing to this poor gnocchi? What do you think you're doing? No, no, no to herbs. You don't put the herbs. It's all about the potato and how you cook the potato, which you didn't do it right. So what are you trying to do here now? You can't save it. What's wrong from the beginning? Next, flour your hands generously and knead the mixture into a dough. Oh, you heard me. He's using his hands. We want something really nice and soft. Now, don't overwork it. It stops the gnocchi from expanding when it hits the pan. I've never heard that before. Gnocchi to expand when they hit the pan. Why do you have to put a gnocchi in the pan? I'm really getting stressed here. I need to eat something. I made a panino with provolone and bresaola. Let me eat as I watch this. That's exactly what I want. A nice sort of soft, fragrant ball. Cut the ball in half. Lightly flour the hands and just roll it gently. And just think of a, a big, long cigar. The mixture will start getting a little bit sort of wetter, but do not add lots of flour. Now, lightly flour. Yum, this panino is really nice. Mmm, bresaolo, provolone, basically bread with olives inside, and extra virgin olive oil. Beautiful. Okay, Gordon, there are so many types of gnocchis from north to south of Italy, there are different versions. So, you can do the shape that you want. But the most common gnocchi you kind of want to make that cigar, I call it snake, the size of your finger. And then you roll it, roll it, roll it, and then you cut it into the shape that you want. Like my nonna cuts diagonal pillows. There are some other people who cut squares and then they roll again with the fingers. There are different versions of gnocchi, there's no right or wrong. What he's doing is they're very thick gnocchi, like the, the, the dough is like super thick. Flour the knife, so when you slice the gnocchi, it doesn't stick. That's a good tip. Put the flour on the knife so it doesn't stick. The other thing I will do is the opposite of what he said. Just use flour on the bench top or on the chopping board. Just put flour because the flour will disappear. You don't want the gnocchi to be sticky. You're not a Michelin star chef like Gordon. So if you try and do what Gordon is doing, that will get stuck to your knife, let me tell you. So just use flour. Flour is your best friend at the moment. Oh, into bite-sized pieces. Just take your finger, dip it in the flour and push down. Why? I want my knockies to look like a pillow. And for me, the most important part there is that not one of them are identically the same shape. I like that what he said, you know. You want them to look like a pillow, it's fine. He doesn't want them to look the same. He want them to look different. When you're an artisan, when you make something homemade and made, you don't want them to look the same. Unless you're a perfectionist, you want them to look just how they are, you know, like different. That means it's a good sign. It means it's not made by a machine. Bring it up to the boil. A little touch of olive oil in there. Oh, God, you didn't learn that. This video is only three months old. Didn't you watch my video reacting to how you cook the pasta? You don't waste olive oil in the pasta water. How many times do I have to tell you, Gordon? Watch the video I've done before where I reacted to your pasta video. Gordon was teaching you how to cook pasta. It was a disaster. Then flour your hand, lift up the gnocchi, in to the rolling boiling water. Excuse me, what do you do? He put the gnocchi on his hand and then in the boiling water. What are you doing? Are well, you gonna put gnocchi all over your arms? What you do is you wanna be smart. Get a tray, put baking paper on top, and then you put the gnocchi in there. Or what you can do, you can just drop some gnocchi a little bit at a time in there. But you don't do that. Well, you're gonna put gnocchi all over my arms and then put it in the pasta water. What are you teaching us, Gordon? Come on, man. It is not your duty to teach people how to make gnocchi. You don't know how to do it. And look at that oil in that bloody water. Turn that pan, and stop them from sticking to the bottom, and let them simmer. And they start to sort of tell you they're cooked when they start floating. The water was not boiling, Gordon. How can they come to the top? First, that pot is way too small. It's too small! When you cook pasta, always use a large pot, especially for fresh pasta. You did such a beautiful job. Don't use a small pot with not much water. Put more water in there if you want to use a large small pot. You need a lot of water. Let the pasta dance in it. You got such a beautiful kitchen. I'm sure you have a bigger pot. Then you put salt into the water, not olive oil. You put a nice tablespoon of salt. When the water boils, you put the gnocchi in. And then, yes, when they come to surface, it means they are ready. Get a pan on, get that nice and hot. Now they're just starting to come up to the top and you can continue cooking them like that. I like blanching them in the water, taking them out and then frying them. 
to say to the gnocchi, eat olive oil. And Did he say he eats frying a gnocchi? Or maybe maybe I'm, I'm not understanding English. I think English is not my first language. Let's hear it again. I like blanching them in the water, taking them out and then frying them. To say to you need to go to jail, Gordon. What are you talking about? What are you frying then put it on gnocchi for? What for? Make the sauce, do a paste sauce. Do a white sauce, do a tomato-based sauce. They don't fry, they're not dumplings. You're not making dumplings from Hong Kong. You're making potato gnocchi. Heat olive oil in a frying pan. Gently lift up and look. They've doubled in size. Drain it, get rid of the excess water, and straight in to the hot pan. Guys, I've never seen this in my life. I've never, 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 never seen anyone frying the potato gnocchi. And I've never seen anyone putting thyme inside a gnocchi. This is, this is, I have no idea what he's doing. I really have no idea what he's doing. And why, you tell me why, one and a half million people watched Gordon Ramsay making this. And there will be double the amount of people in six months. It will be triple the amount of people watching this video in two years. Why are people doing this? Why are you watching this? Why am I watching this? This is where they start to take on a completely different texture. A nice crisp, sautéed texture on the outside. Gnocchi when in the history of cuisine, of food, the potato gnocchis are served crispy? When? I never heard that. Never in my life. Moist, soft potato gnocchi are served not crispy. I never heard that. Never in my life. Loves fresh pepper. So... Pepper in. And you see, as I start turning them, I've got this really nice little sort of brown colour. Oh. Is this guy a Michelin star chef? It's very boring. Gordon, I don't want to be rude, but you don't do this to my cuisine. You really make me upset. You get upset when people do the wrong thing in the kitchen. I'm upset with you right now. Gordon, what's this boring dish are you doing? You're frying these dumplings. I can't even call them gnocchi anymore. What's the flavor? What's in there? Pepper? What are you putting in there? Are you putting peas? What are you putting in there? Huh? Almost puffing up now, like little parcels. So on the nice and sautéed, both sides, but light and creamy in the center. You know, when he pressed on the gnocchi, you need that because it helps to collect the sauce. If you are doing those kind of gnocchi, I'm expecting you to use the sauce, to bring me the sauce to this pan. But if there is no sauce, what's the point to do the incision? What's the point to fry them? What's the point to this video, Gordon? Just to make money and to get views and share wrong information with people? I'm so angry right now, Gordon, I'm so angry. Fresh garden peas. Oh my God, it did. It did put the peas. It did. Why did you put the peas? I was joking. You ruined the carbonara with the peas. Now you're ruining the gnocchi with the peas. You are the peas nightmare. I'm gonna have a nightmare with you putting peas everywhere. You put peas in your coffee, Gordon. What have you been doing, Gordon, in your life? Guys, this is wrong. If he's a Michelin star chef, I am Cristiano Ronaldo, the football champion. I am. And the butter gives it a really nice sort of Benoit Zeff flavor on the end. Useful. Put a little bit of fresh thyme over the. Of course. Let's put more fresh thyme. That gnocchi would have been perfect just with butter and sage, butter and thyme if you want, or butter and peas. But cook the butter before. Do that before, and then you put the pillows inside without frying them. And then you you toss, toss, toss. And that's how you serve. Instead, you fry them. And you you didn't cook the peas. They must have been even frozen. Anyway, I don't know what you're doing anymore. Peas, and then finally, I want to lift it up. Fresh lemon. Zest the lemon over. That's a good idea to put lemon. I like to put lemon in my pasta. It's a very nice idea. And I'm sure this tastes nice. I am sure it will taste nice. What can I say? It is Gordon Ramsay. Can't say it doesn't taste good. Now I have to make it to tell you if it tastes good or not. It's just ruined the gnocchi. It just ruined, absolutely ruined the actual gnocchi pasta. Ruined them when you fry them and when you put the ricotta in there and when you put the thyme. Oh. Get amazingly elegant dishes on a budget that are always guaranteed to impress. What more do you want from great cooking? Cheap to make, easy to cook, and absolutely stunning. 
This video was brought to you by Squarespace. Yes, you can turn your ideas into reality thanks to Squarespace, the leader in website design. I have a website, I share videos, recipes, and whatever it is that I love with you on my website and it changed my life so you create your blog you share your passion you know you just ch choose your category you know in my case it's food your case can be fashion music and basically you choose a template there are so many templates to choose from you choose yours in my case i choose food and then I put video recipes in there, I put food, and then I can use my mobile phone to edit or to update. I can see who is coming to my website. I can send you emails. But the best part is that you can also sell products online if you want to start a business. You can hire an expert if you need help. But honestly, it's so easy because Squarespace has webinars showing you how to use Squarespace. So. Today, we are offering you 10% off on your first website by using the Vincenzo's Plate Code. So make your dream come true. Excuse me. Easy to cook. Yes. Made them wrong way. What more do you want, Gordon? Stop sharing the wrong information with people, Gordon. Please. Oh, that's all I need to say. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. Gordon does not deserve to cook Italian dishes. It did not impress me. It does not impress Nonna. It does not deserve to be your teacher in Italian cooking. You want to learn how to make Italian food? Come to my channel. I'm not great at cooking every Italian dish because the dish in Italy can change from the north to the south. And that's the reason why I have guests coming to my channel and showing the culture. But what I can do, I can cook, I show you how to cook it the right way, the right Italian way. I don't want to share the wrong information with you. I will never go on my channel to show you how to make Chinese dumplings because it's not my culture. I'm not the right person to show you and I want you to eat the right way. With Vincenzo's plate, you eat Italian the right way. So see you in the next Vincenzo's plate video recipe. E ora si mangia. Panino time. Vincenzo's plate. Guys, I also have another beautiful gnocchi recipe, the Calabrese version of gnocchi. Gordo doesn't know how to do that, doesn't even know about the existence of Calabrese gnocchi. Made by a nonna. The video is on YouTube, on my channel, and trust me, they are sensational. Just go in the description below and Click on the link and watch it because it's so yummy. It's the right way. Gordon, watch it and learn. Then God have this panino. Much better than this gnocchi. Mmm. 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 No peace, no time, but lots of love.